Moving on, what is the 245th digit after the decimal point in the repeating decimal here? So obviously in order to write this out, you'd have to write out 0 0.1497, 1497, five digits down, which is just not practical. The best way to do this is actually just treat it as a pattern problem. You see that the pattern is that every four values, you have a seven. So every first value, I mean, if I was to write out the values, right, it would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Okay. I notice that every four values is a seven. I notice that one value, one, five, nine, 13 would be one, uh, would be ones, et cetera, et cetera. Right now, the reason I'm singling out the fours is because I can make a ratio saying, let's say I want to get to value 400. I know that's going to be a seven because it's a multiple of four. Notice four, eight, 12, all those are multiples of four. So any digit that is uh, that has a count of being a multiple of four, like for example, what's the 28th digit? What's the 400th digit? What's the 4,000th digit? I can tell you that it's gonna be four because every fourth value is seven. Okay, I can tell you it's seven because every fourth value is seven. All right, so how do I apply this to this? Well, check, is 245 divided by four, divisible by four? No, it's not, but let's check, for example, uh, let's see, 244 maybe? 244 divisible by four gives you 61. That means that four, uh, uh, this number is a multiple of four, which means the 244th value is seven. So if I just go one value over, let's say this is 244 right here, or sorry, 244, this is 244, 245 would just be the next one here, which would be one, okay? So you use the pattern and you leverage the fact that uh, a multiple of four, as far as the nth digit from the decimal, uh, is always gonna be a seven, and that's how you get your answer here. Moving on, if i equals square root of negative one, then what is this? This looks like a mess. How do we solve this? Um, and how do we get anywhere close to an answer option that looks like this? Let's just take it one piece at a time. Treat this as six individual problems. We'll start with the simple one. i is equal to square root of negative one, okay? Simple as that, we'll just leave it at that. i squared, we know, is equal to square root of negative one squared, which is equal to negative one. Okay, i to the third, how do we calculate this? Um, it's kind of hard to do, right? You don't really know what i to the third is, but what I do know is it's i squared times i. Okay, now we're kind of, you, know, you might think, how is this gonna help us? What I realize is that I actually have this right here and this guy right here. Let's just simplify it. So i squared is equal to negative one, right? So let's just substitute negative one and i. I end up getting negative i. So this entire denominator ends up being i plus i squared, which is negative one, plus negative i, which is equal to well, i minus one minus i, which is equal to negative one because the i's cancel out. So my denominator is just all of that, this atrocity is negative one. Okay, so now we see this where this might be going. This numerator might also simplify to something very, very simple. So let's see where that takes us. i to the fourth. What is i to the fourth? Well, we can model it as i squared times i squared, which I know both of these are just negative one, right? negative one times negative one, easy. That's just gonna be one. So one, I already know i to the third, just borrow that from here, it's negative i. i to the fifth, let's just call that i to the fourth times i, which is gonna be one times i, that's equal to i. Okay, so negative i plus one plus i. That gives you one. Again, this cancels out with that. So one, on the top, negative one on the bottom, that gives you one over negative one, which is equal to negative one. So what we did is we took this horrible looking problem that's just, just looks very messy and unsolvable, and we reduced it to this. 
And we took this and leveraged it for each of these individual steps and we were able to get a solution. So um, that's how you do that one. Again, complex numbers, they, they show up a lot. This I equals square root of negative one. So being able to use that and manipulate it, I feel like this is a really good example of that. Um, and I, I encourage everyone to understand this example, watch it again if you need, um, maybe at half speed if you want. That'll help you understand how to really apply the rules here. Um, because it is crucial, it's asked about on every test. If a to b equals one third, b to c equals two third, what is the ratio of a to c? Think of this as fractions. So a over b is equal to one over three, b over c is equal to two over three. So what is a over c? One way to do it is to just multiply a b times b over c. What happens when you do this? The b's cancel out? Because you end up with a b over b c. Since you're all multiplying, you can just cancel it out you get a over c, which is equal to just um, whatever this multiplied by this is. That's going to be uh, 2 over 9. Right? We're just multiplying those two things together. Another way to do it is to solve for a and then solve for c and then divide them individually. So I'll do that too just to show you because it's possible that some of y'all might have done that method too. a over b is equal to 1 over 3. b over c is equal to 2 over 3. That's if we solve for a, we get 3a equals b a equals b over 3. If we solve for c, we get 3b equals 2c. Um, we get divide by 2, c equals 3 over 2b. Now if we divide a over c, we end up getting b over 3 divided by 3 over 2b. Okay. Now dividing fractions is the same thing as multiplying by the reciprocal. Uh, and I'll just rewrite this as 3b over 2. Okay, so let's just multiply by the reciprocal. b over 3 times 2 over 3b equal to 2b over 9b, which is equal to 2 over 9. All right, and this is the same thing that I was talking about before. The b's cancel out. Same thing that they did in the, the other way of doing it. The b's cancel out. You get the same thing either way. If 4 to the x equals 900, which of the following must be true? Well, so there's two ways to do this. You can do log, uh, do a logarithm. So you know that for any expression b to the x equals y, you know that log b y equals log of y over log of b, and that's equal to x, right? So you can just do logarithms, basic logarithms on your calculator where um, b equals 4 and y equals 900. Okay, so if I do, just using this formula, for example, if I do log of 900 over log of 4, 900 log divided by 4 log to 4.9. So I know the answer is this. You can also just say, okay, I know four to the one is four, four to the second is 16, four to the third is 64, four to the fourth is 256, four to the fifth is I think 1024. So the number has to be between, x one has to be between four and five. In the isosceles right triangle below, AB is 11, what is the length in inches of AC? So we're told that it's isosceles and right. So let's interpret both of these. The right is the easy part. We see that there's a 90 degree angle there. Now isosceles, what does that tell us? It means that there are two side lengths in this triangle that are equal to one another. And given that this is a right triangle, the hypotenuse must be the longest exclusively. There is no other side length that equals it. It is for sure 100% the longest. Okay. So that means if there are two side lengths that are the same length, it has to be these other two. That means this is 11. Okay. So we're asked to find AC. AC is the longest. You can either use Pythagorean theorem, just do a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Um, in this case, this is a, this is b, and your longest is c. You can calculate it that way. Or you can just remember the fact that uh, for a right isosceles triangle, if you have one, one for side lengths, you would have square root of two for the, you basically just take the side length and multiply by square root of two, and that is your answer for the, uh, for the hypotenuse. Now, none of the answers are, the, the correct answer is 11 square root of 2. None of them are in that form. Um, so let me just do the Pythagorean theorem that should give us the right answer as well. So 11 squared plus 11 squared equals c squared. Just do uh, c equals square root of, what's 11 squared times 2? 2? 242. Okay, so it's e. Moving on to 58. A number is increased by 40%, and the resulting number is then decreased by 30%, 35%. The final number is what percent of the original number? All right, let's assign an original number. Let's take 100. 
Okay, 100 is increased by 40%. So 40% of 100 is 40. Adding that to 100, we get 140. Now we're going to decrease this by 35%. So we have to find 35% of 140. And we get 49. So 140 minus 49 is 91. Now all we have to do is figure out 91 divided by 100. That's going to be 0.91 or 91%. Therefore C is our answer for 58.